Hi, I'm Ray Jasper, Assistant Chief Officer, Torres State Emergency Service. The following video shows a presentation of what VicS can do, what the volunteers can do after a fire event. It's a win-win for the community and for VicS volunteers. We do skills maintenance in chainsaw work with the amount of chainsaw work we do after significant storm and other events, and a win for the community basically with cutting up the trees um, after a fire effect to help, help clean up the community as part of the recovery process. Win-win for us, win-win for the community, but something VicS has done um, over a period of, sort of 10 years now in recovering from fire events. I'm Tony Fitzgerald, I'm President of the Bunyip Complex Fires Community Recovery Committee. The fires came through our community in March 2019 and 267 properties were affected by the fires. They went through Tynong North, Garfield North, Bunyip North, Tonning Buck, 30 homes were destroyed here. It's been a real battle for the community from day dot. I think when people get out of bed and you've got 60 trees down or 100 trees down on your property and it's just very, it's in your face, it's very confronting. And when the SES came in, they could only come in for a while the first time. Then Ron Fitch came along and started volunteering and worked with um, the community recovery committee and got to know all the residents and he brought some um, colleagues as well from the, the SES and have done an incredible job for our community and we love the guy. Come about with a program that the SES instigated after 2009 fires in King Lake and just to carry on from the Chaps and Chainsaw program that instigated then. I got involved because I normally do. I, always put my hand up to go everywhere and I've made some very good friends down here and I've just continued that relationship with the community. Having SSE involved and in instances above and beyond where SES haven't been able to partake, I've just carried on the uh, goodwill work that, that I carry out. So we first met Ron and the SES crews after the March 19 Bunyip Ridge fires which so heavily impacted uh, this, this area. Since then, Ron and his crews have become part of our community and a very valued part of them. Oh, look, it was amazing. It was like a, um, someone throwing a warm blanket around your shoulders on a freezing cold night. It was great to know that that support of, of community-minded people were here as a crew to, to come in and, and lend a hand. Yeah, well, Ron's become sort of like a part of the family, if you like, and he's helped so many people in the community clean up their properties. And I guess what would have otherwise seemed overwhelming suddenly seemed manageable with, with Ron and his crews. Ron came to our property in Tuesday, one day in Tuesday in April of this year, and said, I've got a crew, um, we've got a program going and that's called Chaps and Chainsaws and we can have a crew up here this weekend to help you with that enormous pile of wood. And I am so grateful because it was an absolutely overwhelming moment for us. It, it, it had been a really tough road because we hadn't had any outside help at all. We'd had um, you know, five properties that had been damaged and the enormous, the work, out, the work was just huge. So it wasn't just one little property, it was it was one after the other after the other, trying to keep the business running, all of that sort of stuff. And I have to say that by the time January came, I was struggling to get out of bed. I knew that, you know, it, we had Mount, we had to get to Mount Everest. I, I didn't think I'd get to base camp. I was tired. I was um, feeling depressed, I suppose. I didn't want to get out of bed. Didn't want to look at the workload. Didn't want to do it. Ron turned up and it was just like this angel came from heaven and then on Saturday all these angels in orange turned up. It was just fabulous. Chaps and Chainsaw completed the program April this year I believe. There was still a hell of a lot of work to do on some of the properties. Myself being retired and with not very little to do decided that I'd put in some additional time down in the community so I started off spending two to three days a week down here chainsawing away with assistance from a couple of close friends of mine and uh, it still goes on today. I've gelled in here very well, they've accepted me very well. They've asked me to do certain things and if it's within my scope I do it. And uh, I've made some very good friends, lifelong friends I believe. 
We couldn't get into our properties for three weeks, so I didn't know what was happening at my property. I didn't know whether it had been burnt down, except rumours said it wasn't. I didn't know what was left, what was standing, or anything like that. Everybody was saying, we'll do this, we'll do that, but nobody came. They all looked at the property and then said, well, we'll put you on the list. And then Ron arrived with his, um, with, by himself to assess what needed to be done. He said almost, we'll be back next week. I can't remember what the time frame was. And he came with this team of volunteers, a bit like, and, and cut up these trees and removed trees from fences and enabled me to move forward. It was, it was a very emotional time. Ron's been part of um, our community, part of the local, we call it the Upper Tonnenbuck community, but part of CRC and different functions we have the dinners that we have here. I'm on the Tonnenbach Hall Committee and we have, um, we've had dinners since the bushfires and since COPE. And Ron and his team are invited always. And Ron generously attends most of them. It's lifted a far, a, a real great burden off their shoulders that they've actually seen. I think we've been quoted as, as um, angels in orange. It's amazing. We've regenerated this community to some degree where they're actually down, right down the bottom end of the scale. Now they're starting to climb the ladder back up just through some of us people in Orange coming out to help them.